Welcome to the Philly Sports Dish. I'm the one and only big game dame, and I'm here with my main man, dude. What's going on? We're talking Philadelphia sports, but we're talking about it from the fans' perspective. So let's get into it, my friend. Okay. What happened? What happened a couple days ago? Somebody, we got a new champion. Uh, yeah. What is it like 50, 19, 1971? <laughs> the bridesmaid, never the bride. All those years with the Celtics. Yeah, I, I, the barely, real, I, barely the yeah, I barely watched. I barely watched. It was it was <laughs> tough to watch, but if you got to think about it this way, you wrap your mind around it. There's two things that stood out for me, and I want to get your reaction to this. The Bucks were a team that was grown organically. Okay. For the most part, mm-hmm. for the most part, they were a team, especially during the process. And let's be honest, Sixers fans trolled them. If you go on Twitter a lot, if you follow the whole inter- internet sphere, you yeah. know, because the Bucks were very critical of the process, their front office. Um, but they got it done. And here, here, this not to cut you off, but here's, yeah. here's, here's, here's what I would say to that. Respect to them. They won it. So, you know, respect, respect to the champs. But to win a championship, you got to catch some breaks. And that's everything. And, and listen, I don't feel as though coming into next season – Look out for the Bucks. That's just how yeah. I feel. Like they 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 court they court huge bricks. Like I said, they court Brooklyn shorthanded. I know they don't know how they ended up playing Atlanta. <laughs> like, yeah, let's just be honest. Um, Giannis even missed a few games that series. You know what? Honestly, uh, it seemed like the basketball equivalent when the Eagles won it a couple years ago. Okay. Honestly, um, it was just no. I, I say more like the Raptors. You know, with the, the Raptors, Raptors, you know, quarter break that that bounce of course against us in Game Seven, and then getting to see um, Golden State basically decimated yeah. by injury. So I, I kind of like you know, they. I mean, congratulations, you only, you only can play who are in front of you, but you know, they 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 court an extraordinary high number of breaks. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's the thing: the way you win championships, especially mm-hmm. in the NBA, is. You either have those years where everything just breaks right for you, the right players get hurt from the other teams, yada, mm-hmm. yada, yada. Got to put yourself in that position, and that's what I'm giving them credit for. Or you just build these super mega teams. Yeah. Where well, and, I mean, I'll, let's face it, only X amount of teams have won the NBA title over the last 30 years. I will say this, though. Giannis is such a likable guy. Like that's the one thing I, I took away from this. He's like, the new face. That that that, like that guy a, is. Yeah. He, he he he's a good dude. He, he is. If I'm marketing, mm-hmm. I'm putting him out on everything. Mm-hmm. Even my mom is coming up to me, and she's like, she's like, is he Greek? Because he looks African American. How does that work? And I'm like, mom, he's Greek. You know, so. Like, they got a chance. Like, they have a chance. The NBA have has a chance to have a face, a post-LeBron face here, which is a good thing for the game as well. And I'm asking you this because always a bridesmaid, never a bride. Mm-hmm. That, I think, is the story of Philadelphia sports. Are we cutting because of the cat? So we're just going to let the cat be part of the show? <laughs> let him be part of the show. Let's keep it going. <laughs> All right, go ahead. So always a bridesmaid, never a bride. And that seems like that's just Philadelphia, period. For the most part. I mean, you get every 10 years, you get a championship mm-hmm. um, before a major city for one of the biggest markets in the United States. I mean, you know, I mean, come on. Yeah. Congratulations, Milwaukee. Yeah. And that's what I want to ask. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just thinking about like, so let's get there because the, if we see the Milwaukee Bucks win it. I'm a believer the way this team is constructed, and some people might disagree, that I don't think the Sixers can, will ever win a championship unless they, and this is my personal opinion, unless there is a, they need an adult on that court. They need an adult on that court, who's Jimmy Butler, who still has the talent, Jimmy Butler, to actually get something done on the court as well, just not a name. And that leads me into my question. Let's talk Philadelphia overall. The next, let's say, three to seven years, okay. what franchise has the best chance at getting it done? Actually stop, you know, stop knocking on the door and actually win a championship. It was the like, Eagles were the last. Who do you think has the best chance? Because, you know, there's a lot of the, you could, I can see this with Philadelphia fans going a lot of different ways. So what do you think? Well, I think everybody's initial and obvious answer is the 76ers. Um 
they're probably the most talented team right now. And arguably probably had the most talented young players. Also, if you project in five to seven years out, which teams have young players that may still be relevant that we can see now. Um, I hate to say this, but I, I think it's the Sixers more by default, though. Um, the other three franchises don't have a good track record of, of drafting. Um, the Eagles, as you said, they quit lightning in the bottle, if we're being honest. You know, we, yeah. we, we've seen what happened these last few years. Um, they were the best team, in my opinion, that year. Um, but drafting wise, yeah, they, they haven't been good at that. And that's always the foundation of your team. The Phillies, they organize, they, they, the cupboard is bare. They have nothing in the minor leagues. They're, they have one of the worst minor league uh, systems in all of baseball. You know, what's new? So I don't see, I don't see how you can project them to be doing anything in the next five to seven years. The Flyers, we thought turned the corner the previous season with the run they made in a bubble, but it seemed like they regressed this season also. So I hear that they have a, a lot of young talent, but coming off the season that they just had, they look like they're ready to hit the reset button. So for me, if the Sixers don't win a championship in the next five years, I think it's safe to say that's a, a major disappointment. Yeah. Um, for me personally, I'm going to go with the Eagles. And this is why I'm going to go with the Eagles. I know their history of drafting, but like you said, in NFL, your turnaround can be so quick, and you can be the best team in the league for that one year, and all of the pieces can fit properly. And that's one thing. I know a lot of Philadelphia fans don't have faith in Howie Roseman, but we've seen them patch and piece a one year together. They have three first-round picks. I don't want to draft them. We know the Eagles' history in the draft. But if you actually do something with those, they're, the Eagles are good at bringing in outsiders. They're not good at growing anything internally. But they do have pieces. When you look at the Sixers, I think the Phillies are DOA. It's the same team every year. Okay? The Flyers, we just don't know because it's so you, – you just don't – you. they just don't have that next level, that level of talent. They still haven't built it there. Um and that leads to the Sixers. And honestly, I'm, I, I, I do not think the players on this team had a heart. They, they need an outside force. I just don't think that the well, talent, the way it's structured, and the NBA, it's so hard to win a championship. If you look at next year, then I'll, I'll, let, you, I'll mm -hmm. let you get to your point. If you look at what the Sixers have to face next year. Mm -hmm. Now, like you said, I agree with you with, with Milwaukee. But still, you got to play them in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna, they're good. That's gonna be a tough out to get them out. Okay, you got New Jersey, you got the the Lakers aren't gonna sit on as long as LeBron's there. They're not just gonna sit in. Did I say New Jersey? I'm in mm -hmm. Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Taking it back in the day, you know. There's just a lot of hurdles in the NBA to win a championship, and you got to win best four out of seven. Mm -hmm. You get NFL. You win those games. You put it together. Oh. All the pieces fall in place, and you can get it done. So that's the reason I would go with uh, the Eagles. Uh, just my last word on that is I just trust the Sixers front office more than I trust the Eagles front office. And I, I agree. If we've been objective here, as of today, the Sixers have the best player. They they have a, a, a true alpha, a true number one player in the NBA, somebody that can win an MVP. And in the NBA, if you can just get one more big time player to go with that, let's go. Yeah, so you're talking about Embiid, but my issue with Embiid is there's a lot of baggage there. There's a lot of baggage, and then let's be honest, like but none of the other the, franchises have an Embiid. This is true, but there's always this ominous cloud of him getting hurt. None of the other franchises have an Embiid. You're right. You're right. Yeah, I mean, you got to start. I mean, if you don't have the, the the horses, what are we what are we talking about? Yeah, but we got to hope that Jalen Hurts or one of the Eagles turn out to be a dominant player. Uh, I don't even know who's a dominant player for the Phillies besides Bryce Harper, and he isn't putting up Bryce Harper numbers. I don't think – I think they expected more for what they paid. And the Flyers, you know, Claude Giroux has been their star for like the last 10 years. Like they, they – they, give me somebody yeah. else that's 
that's a you know a, a legitimate star that has a chance to be a superstar. The Phillies legit just paid Harper to be the face of the franchise. That's all. Yeah. They're, 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 if you don't have a minor league system, you have no chance at winning. They don't have a minor league system. They don't. It's it's something that they don't focus on. It's something that they don't concentrate on. And speaking of bad drafting, mm -hmm. you know, like people give Howie Roseman a hard time. Like, geez, Louise, look at who the Phillies bring in. And they just when they do come up, they send them right back down to AAA. You know, it's just like their their farm system is just like you said, it's just a wasteland. So I'm gonna go with the Eagles because I think it's a quick turnaround, and I am just not sold on this Sixers team. Talk to me if the Sixers. I like Morley. Morley knows what he's doing. If he let's see when the season's about to start, let's see what moves he makes. I, one, I'm only going on this current team the way it is. Embiid is not enough. One last question, because when you were giving your reasons for the Eagles and maybe saying the Sixers would be tougher, is because of the the teams that were in front of the Sixers. Those obstacles you named the the Bucks, the Nets, the Lakers. I'm curious, as we sit here today, um, how many teams in the NFL do you think are better than the Eagles? Oh, but I, I agree with, like, <laughs> like 30 of them. <laughs> but here's the thing with that. Three years from now, we might not be saying that. And three years from now, the Sixers still might be trying to dig out of a mud hole. Listen, if you only can say it might maybe only three teams that you say is better than the Sixers right now, I like my chances. Yeah, but the NBA, <laughs> you don't beat those other. You don't beat the NBA. When does the weaker team lose? The Sixers or only number the Sixers? Seed. Sixers are the number one seed and they lose. Number one seed, so that means so it's they're, they're, it's they're there. Rare, they're on the cusp. But it's rare <laughs> in the NBA when you get into. Let's say they play the Lakers in the finals next year. Mm -hmm. Can't win it if you ain't in it. You can't win it if you ain't in it. The but, Eagles ain't going to be in it next year. But here's, they not going to be in it the year after. <laughs> yeah, but the Sixers, I mean, we, we we it's Philadelphia. We've been through the bridesmaid thing. That's all I'm saying. The Sixers are all over. Sixers right now are at the prom with no date, and they lost their ticket, and their face is pressed against the glass while everybody else is dancing. I disagree. And they think, they, and they think they're, they think there's something <clears throat> more than they are. Disagree. Like, disagree. I, I think your, I think their reaction is still somewhat emotional. I think if you if you looking at it, <clears throat> they are by far the most talented team in the city. <clears throat> by far, have the best player in the city, and I can argue no disagreement. I can argue that they may have the two best players in the city. Who's the second one? The, the one that caused kids everybody headaches. The one that everybody wants to run out of town. Oh, Ben Simmons. That that guy. I mean, say what you want. He's super talented. Now. I understand why people are upset with him, but just from a talent standpoint, would he not be one of the best players on any other franchise in this city? Like, I mean, what, you want to say maybe Fletcher Cox is better than him? No, Fletcher Cox hasn't done anything in five years. I mean, so. But, you know, it'll be interesting to see. I'll I'll take the Sixers. I'll let you well, have Let's Eagles. do the, uh, and this is on film, let's do the old uh, Duke brothers. One dollar? One American dollar. <laughs> One American dollar. Will okay. we visit this in the near future? I hope you're right about the Sixers. I don't like Sixers fans as much because they're a little whiny, in my opinion. I'm a Sixers fan. Um, I don't think they respect the game, but I still want the Sixers to win a championship. No gimmicks. When they stop doing the gimmicks, and that's the thing I like about Morley. Morley is your hope. Not Simmons, not Embiid. Morley is your hope. Uh, only thing here I think is Morey. Moray? Yeah. <laughs> Moray? Moray? I'm turning into my mother here. Book your names. Moray? Down I, Moray. Yeah. I've been calling this guy Morley since he's been here. Like, <laughs> sure about that? Yeah. Moray. Like, all right, Moray. My bad. Right. My bad. If, if for some psychotic reason you're watching this, my, I'm sorry. You're running crazy long. <laughs> all right. So that's pretty much going to be it. But I do want to do one really quick thing before we close. Next week, Eagles training camp is coming up. Okay. We are going to talk about training camp, what to look for. We're going to look at all of the different positions. I'm going to get your evaluation. Then we're going to play Philadelphia Name Association. All right? Okay. So I'm going to give you a sneak preview when I'm talking about Philadelphia Name Association. And let's start off with your boy with the Sixers that I've been butchering his name, apparently. <laughs> First word that comes into your mind, Daryl Morey. I actually a phrase came to my mind, not a word. All right, well, what's what's the phrase? 
He's going to get it done. He's going to get it done? He's going to get it done. Or I'll put it like this. If you want a word, belief. I'll say, I'll, I'll do the Obama and say hope. Okay, I think he gives. I think he gives Sixers fans hope. He is a competent general manager in a sea of incompetence that we've had in Philadelphia's history. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for this week. We will see you next time. Y'all be safe out there. Keep your nose clean. Stay out of trouble. We're out. Dang time, dang time. Welcome to Philly, baby. <laughs>